All right. Well, good to see everybody here tonight <laughs> that, that can be here. Uh, the flu bug has struck us. All right. Again, thank you for allowing me to uh, represent you in India. The Bible does tell us where there's no vision, the people perish. And Paul told King Agrippa, he said, uh, I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. And so I thank you that uh, you have not been either by sending me to uh, over there in India and to other places. I'm going to start in kind of an unusual area tonight because it does have a lot to do with what's happening here. So I would like for you to turn to Ezekiel chapter 44. Ezekiel chapter 44. And even before I read any verses, I'm going to pray and get right into the message tonight. Ezekiel chapter 44. So let's pray and we'll ask to hear from God tonight. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we do come before you. And Lord, it's because of you that we're here. It's not of our own accord. And so we humble ourselves down before you that we may hear from heaven tonight. We thank you for giving us the precious word of God. But Lord, I would ask as we look at these verses that your Holy Spirit would speak to their heart. Yes, it is a time of rejoicing for us for the great things that you did in India. But Lord, I pray that you'd help us to make sure that we're saved, to know that we're on our way to heaven, and to honor and glorify you with our lives here as we live in the Columbus and Grove City area. Again, we thank you for your kindness to us and all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 44... It's basically all prophecy. Now, prophecy is uh, different in the Bible. Sometimes you have historical prophecy, sometimes you have fulfilled prophecy, and sometimes you have doctrinal prophecy, which is, is prophecy or future events that are still going to take place. As we read here in Ezekiel, we are reading about future prophecies concerning the rebuilding of the temple and what will take place during the millennial time. You say, well, what does that have to do with us? So that's what I'm going to tell you right now. Number one, the people of Israel, as the people of India, are in an idolatrous state and in abomination to God. Now, I must remember that God always leaves a remnant. There's always going to be people that are following God's Word. It's not going to be the majority. It's going to be the few. The Bible says that there's going to be few people that find the truth. Now, we want everyone to hear the truth, but even many people, when they're faced with the truth, they're, they're not going to follow after Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now there's not a person in Columbus that could not go to a Walmart and buy a Bible. But how many of them are following after the Lord Jesus Christ? Not very many. But you see, in other parts of the world, uh, they don't have anything to go off of. They don't have any place to start. So, if I asked you, uh, how would we build the temple during the millennial time? Well, we don't know. Okay, God hasn't told us that. It's the same with people that are trying to start a church in their country if they have nothing to go from. Now, what we have here in Columbus, Ohio, is we have what's called a pattern church. The Lord has given us a pastor according to the will of God based on what he has told us from the Bible. pastor did not just say, you know, I'm the most popular guy around here, I think I'll be the pastor. And we all vote for, hey, let's vote for, for Stan Slayball, hooray! No, it doesn't work that way. There's a pattern. The, the Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. 
And so there, there must be a way to have it done. Now here in Ezekiel, the Bible talks about the people of Israel, how they're an abomination. Number two, the Levites, those that had the information concerning proper worship, they did the things their way and not the Lord's way. Again, we're not talking about the situation here in the United States, but at the same time, we are. We do have the information. We do know how a church service is supposed to be run. We do know who qualifies to be a pastor. We do know right doctrine from the Word of God. See, this is a problem with religion. Religion says, I am going to get myself to God. I'm going to follow some system of teaching so that God will accept me. But God is holy, and He will not accept anything from a sinner. That's why Jesus Christ left heaven and came to us. Number three, there were those that God said are doing things my way, and they were called the sons of Zadak. Let's look here in chapter 44, and we're going to read uh, verse 15. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadak, they kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me. They shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. Now, who are these people of Zadak? Well, it happened way back in the story of David. In the story of David, there was a man by the name of Hushai. All right? Now, how, how many of you have heard of Hushai? You know, you know him, okay? So most of you are familiar with him. What happened was, as David was the king in Israel, but Absalom, his son, rebelled against him and tried to take over the kingdom. But what David did is he appointed one of his men, Hushai, who was a double agent. And he went in and he found out the information from Absalom. And what Hushai did is he went and he talked to Zadok, the priest, and he told the information to David. So this is the priest that followed after the ways of David. Are you with me so far? All right. The Bible says we are a peculiar people. We are priests to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But you see, it's not going to be any God that we choose or any God that we like. It's going to be the one that is of the Son of David. And His name is Jesus Christ. So here you have these people that God said, I am going to use them to show the people how to serve in the temple that I will build in the future. Then, God tells Ezekiel, He said, I want you to tell them everything that I'm going to tell you. He said, whatever I tell you, whatever you hear, that's what I want you to tell those people because those are the people that I've appointed to do my work. Now, I'm not going to go, and I'm not going to be a pastor in India. And probably none of you are either unless the, the laws by the government change. But what God has told us to do he says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so we have a commission from God to tell everybody how to be saved. But once they're saved, they must have the Word of God and then they must have local churches. Why? Because that's why they were created to honor and glorify Him. And so we have to take it to the next step. But since I'm not going to be there and you're not going to be there, who's going to be there? the ones that God appointed, the local pastors in their churches. And so what we have to do is we have to send some Ezekiels, those that said, 
here am I, send me. Bible Baptist Church, here am I, will you send me? And you did. And I want to thank you tonight for sending me over there to uh, India. Yes, 133 people were saved, but that was just in the villages. In the schools and in the youth conference, and those that we talked to, 193 were saved. So God says, I'm going to send somebody to tell them, and you tell them everything that I told you. Now, our, my, our, our pastor, uh, Slayball, and myself, and again, I'm not, I'm not uh, talking about myself tonight. I'm just telling you some facts. That we had the privilege of growing up in what we would call a pattern church. In other words, other people that are starting churches that are new in the ministry, they form their church and make it run like that. Why? Because that church is being used by God in a special way. No, nobody's uh, uh, doing their own thing. Hey, me and God, we got our own thing going. No, you don't. You're either doing it God's way or you're doing it wrong. And so God's got a pattern for everything. Just like He had a pattern for the temple, and He has one in the future, He's got some people preserved that are going to rebuild that again later. But hey, I already have my changed body at that time, so just to be honest with you, well, I really don't care about that. <laughs> you know. But what I'm saying is, is He has that. So for now, uh, He has those that know how things should be done in church, he knows how things should be done concerning doctrine. He has those people. Bible Baptist Church is absolutely a pattern church for missionaries. But we need to not just leave it here among ourselves and say, hey, look what God's doing with us. We need to take this and teach others. Please turn to uh, Mark chapter 10. Turn to Mark chapter 10. 10. Now, at the end of the chapter, in Mark chapter 10, you have the story of blind Bartimaeus. And I, I preach this uh, oftentimes when I'm overseas. Sometimes I preach it in small churches and there's many, many things. As I said, I, I have a whole message concerning this. And it's basically a story of a man that's a blind beggar, and he comes to Jesus, and he's asking for help. He hears, he hears that Jesus is coming through the area. And when he, when he hears he's coming, he cries out for help. So in Mark chapter 10, and in verse 47... And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. So here he is, he can't see anything, but he hears Jesus is coming. He hears that he was the one that could give him sight. And I'm telling you, people all over the world, including here in Grove City, they need some spiritual sight. But they're crying out to the wrong people. They're crying out on Ash Wednesday. They're crying out to all oh, this and that and one thing or another. But it's not that way at all. They need to be doing the same thing as he did here. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my soul. And so he cries. And you know what the people did around him? They didn't say, man, you're doing the right thing. Yeah, get to Jesus. No, they didn't do that at all. They went up to him and said, Shut up! You're embarrassing us. You keep your mouth quiet. But that didn't stop him. <laughs> he, the Bible says that he cried out the more. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And he did. You know, we need Jesus' mercy on us in many areas of our life. First of all, in salvation. Man, if you're not saved, get saved. You realize, if one little thing happens in your life, you're going to hell forever! All it takes is some, some guy that's high as a kite, or somebody that's drunk to get off course, and, you, and, and you're, you're just doing what you're supposed to do on a normal everyday thing, and BAM! Out into eternity, there you are. 
If you're not saved, get God's mercy on your life tonight. Well, I'll wait till Sunday. Man, you may not have till Sunday. And those of us that know our Bible, we know the Lord could return at any time. Don't mess around with eternity. Just like that thing I told that girl at the airport. Hey, you want to find out what's happening in the future? Then find out where your final destiny is going to be. Just like the preacher told us Sunday. Now, Jesus came not to condemn the world. Why? Because they're condemned already. If you don't cry out to God for mercy to save your soul, you're already doomed. Man, we need mercy in our families. How many would say, Brother Yoder, my family's a okay. I don't need God. Nobody would do that unless they're a fool. Man, we need help. You know all those things you see on TV about, uh, you know, heroin deaths are up again. You know where those people come from? They come from families. Man, we need God's mercy in our family. We need God's mercy in our finances. Most people, they don't live by the principles of God concerning their finances, number one, because they don't really know what they are. And number two, those, of the, those that do know, they don't have enough faith to do it. I am so thankful for Bible Baptist Church that has been sending me on these trips to other places around the world. Do you know how rare it is to be sending a person like me around the world? I've already made five different trips, and I'm only on 40% uh, of my income that I need. Do you know how rare that is? That's God right there. But over the last 14 months, we've seen over 593 people saved because somebody had faith to send Dr. Yoder. Please turn to, and, and there's more things that we need to cry out for mercy. But again, that's another message. So let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Let me just give you a couple of things and I'll be finished. That story that we read there in Mark chapter 10, that story concludes, I should have had you look at it before we turn, but it concludes by saying that he immediately followed Jesus in the way. In James chapter 1, let's read verses 21 and 22. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The Bible says right here, if you have the word of God in your hand, you need to be meek about that. You need to be thankful about that. Why? Because you don't deserve it any more than the other guy. The places where we're going, they don't deserve the Bible less than we do. We have the Word of God in our hand because of God's grace. And he said, when you have that and you've been saved, you need to be a doer of this Word. Somebody was talking to me, and they said, um, what, what a great privilege you had of talking to that girl in the airport, that Hindu lady. And she got saved. Well, that's true, but you know what? Somebody had to open their mouth. It's not that we don't have opportunities. It's many times when we have an opportunity to say something, we don't say anything. That's not the time to pray for them. The time to pray for them is when you're apart from them. The time to talk to them is when you're next to them. And here the Bible says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So what happens when you follow in the way? Uh, number one, you begin doing what you're taught. 
I showed that little video of the music thing because they knew that their music situation over there was bad. Uh, the first time we went to that village, they had two other drums and a tambourine going above all of that. But this time, they, they cut a lot of that out. And I haven't even, hadn't even preached a series on music at all there yet. But they heard the Word of God. And, that's, and that was that place where that music was coming from was that preacher that came up to me and said, I prayed for you every single day since you left that you would come back. And I'm so happy that you're here and that you're preaching and teaching the same way as you did last time. They're doing the things that they're being taught. People say, well, we never heard about the way that we're doing it with 1040 International. It's, it's doing it right. It's doing it right. You see, when, when, when I go to these villages for the second time, I have to review what I told them a year ago. Because they'll give me a question and pick up right where we left off a year ago. Hey, you remember when you said blah, blah, blah? What does this... Most people don't remember what took place in church two weeks ago. So when you have people that are doing the things that they're taught, I want to tell you, that is the Lord. That's not Dr. Yoder, that's not me, that's the Lord working. What, what, what is it, what, what's going on when you have people that remember the message of over a year ago? That's the Lord. The Lord was lifted up. In John 12, 32, the Bible tells us, uh, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. The reason that God used me to lead those people to Christ and show them how they could be saved is because you sent me over there to magnify Jesus Christ to them. And He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And number three, when you follow in the way, you hold fast in the face of threats, persecution, and false doctrine. I don't know how many Christians, and Pastor and I, we talk about this all the time, how people, they will know something is a false doctrine and wrong, heresy according to the Bible, and years later, they're right in the middle of it. How does that happen? That happens because they're no longer following in the way. They've got away from the leader, Jesus Christ. They started following after the flesh and their own desires. I'm coming to you tonight thanking you for sending me. God used the work over there in India in an incredible way. Our praying, financing, Preached over 30, 35 different times. Taught in 12 villages. Had 193 people saved. Of the souls that were saved, a 17-year-old pastor's son was saved. You talk about excitement. When you have a small congregation of, say, 35, 40 people, and your son is there, Week after week after week, and you don't even know if he's saved. Some guy comes in from America and preaches, gets saved, and your son raises his hand, God save me. Man, you talk about excitement. That pastor was on cloud nine. Twelve people baptized. We saw young men with new wives surrender for full-time ministry. We saw churches strengthened, we saw pastors revitalized, and we saw our special giving for the motorcycle put to work immediately. It wasn't, well, let me test this thing out for a couple weeks and keep it all shined up and uh, so forth. 
No, they were immediately using it for the pastor's conference that we had there. Running here and there and getting rice and coffee and cookies and uh, hot peppers and whatever else they put in their food. I don't know. It's incredible. Brother Gary and I talked about that earlier today. You want to eat some wild things, go to India, that's for sure. Philemon, you thought Mexico was bad. You go to India, brother. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. It takes a little bit of courage to go over there. I look at our young people. Man, they're worried about sports. They're worried about boyfriend, girlfriend. And I like sports. And I love my wife. But, you know, we're, the, the reason we're, we're here is not because of the final four. You know, we got a brother back here with us today. He's got his son with him, praise the Lord, wrestler. Man, I love wrestling. As soon as I see a guy like that, first thing I want to do is get him, you know, see, see if he can take it or not, you know. You know what I mean, Philemon? <laughs> so, but... But that, that's, just, that's just this much of life. That's just this much of life. You see this shirt, wrestling is life. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I'll tell you what's life is when somebody's sick and they're dying in the hospital and they're on their way to hell and you've got the truth from God to tell them, hey, you want to go to heaven to have a new life? There it is. That's life. In him it was life, and the life was the light of man. These things that were done over there, it was because of the Lord. And I'm so glad that you had a part in it. Keep following Jesus, and he'll keep you in the way. Let me just close with this, and it was mentioned on the video. We, we were getting ready to leave the area where those... Uh, where the orphans were. And of course, you know, my travel part partner, Doug, he would always give them uh, uh, football cards and little different things, and they loved it, and they loved playing with him. And so we wanted to see him one more, see the kids one more time before we left, but it was at late at night. And so we called ahead of time and asked the pastor if we could come in because we said, you know, it's, it's awful late. And he's like, oh man, when they find out you're you're coming, they won't sleep all night. But yeah, come on, come on anyhow. And so we get into this village, and then we travel down this, this path. It wasn't a long path, but it's late at night. It's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And we start talking with the pastor, and next thing we know, we turn around, and there's this Hindu woman there, just with a big old scowl on her face. And... Uh, the local pastor knew her, and he said, "Dr. Yoder, this is the uh, this is the uh, the Hindu schoolmaster in this area. She's a she's a, a lady of great influence. Every one of the uh, parents in this area know this lady. So we talked for just a just a couple minutes, and I found out that she wanted to come and be." part of my pastor's conference that was there. Now, she didn't know that <laughs> you have to be a man to be a pastor, amen? <laughs> but she wanted to come, and her schedule didn't allow it, so uh, she was hoping that at some point in time we would come back. Now, how is it on a, on a weekday, late at night, we come driving in to this little orphanage area where the school is, and all of a sudden this lady comes in? And I start giving her the gospel, and she was all ready to receive the gospel. It just had to be explained to her. She bowed her head and asked Jesus Christ to be her personal Savior. Lifted her head, big old smile. Man, I want to tell you, uh, God's still saving people. Are, are you saved? H have you humbled yourself so that God could save you? What a wonderful thing to know that heaven's your home. And not only that, that God that has the power to just like that save that guy from 
the demon possession and all the crazy stuff he was doing, he's got the power to, to save you and to help you in your Christian life and to stay on the way. Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us the truth. People all over the world look for truth in all different kinds of places. And even this weekend, we heard it by uh, those that had examined Jesus Christ uh, right before he was crucified, saying, what is truth? The world doesn't know that you're the truth. And by receiving you, they could be saved eternally. I pray for those that are, sa that are here tonight that do not know 100% for sure that if they died, they'd go to heaven. I pray that they would take care of that tonight. Lord, we thank you for using Bible Baptist Church for the great work that was done over in India. I pray, the Lord, that you would give us the wherewithal to continue, whether it be in finances, whether it be in health, whether it be in prayers, no matter what it is, to continue on for thee. We'd ask now that uh, you would bless tonight during the invitation time. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor.